Hi everybody, today we're going to be learning about motor unit recruitment. But before we begin, we've got a few questions for you. Look around. Do you know where you are right now? Can you see the person sitting next to you? Can you wave your hand or touch your nose? If so, you can thank your nervous system. The nervous system is a complex network of cells that carry messages from our brains to other parts all over our body. Among these cells are nerve cells, also called neurons, which can transmit important information to other cells, muscles, and glands. And lucky for you, your brain has billions of these little guys. We can consider the nervous system in two main sections, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system includes the brain and the spinal cord and is where all the information gets processed. The peripheral nervous system includes all the neurons found outside of the central nervous system, including sensory neurons and motor neurons. Sensory neurons gather all the information outside and inside of our bodies and carry the information into the central nervous system so it can be interpreted. So every time you catch the sweet smell of chocolate chip cookies or your favorite food, your sensory neurons are in action. Motor neurons carry information from the central nervous system to the outer parts of our bodies, like our skin and muscles. So let's break it down a little more. Neurons receive incoming signals through their dendrites. If the signal is excitatory, the neuron fires an electrical impulse, called an action potential. This action potential will travel down the axon to the axon terminal, where the neuron will pass the signal onto another cell. So imagine this. If someone taps you on the knee, your sensory neurons will be stimulated and will fire action potentials. These signals will be carried to the spinal cord, where they will connect with motor neurons. Because the signals from the sensory neurons are excitatory, the motor neurons will also fire action potentials, causing your knee to jerk. So now that we understand how signals can be passed through neurons, let's talk about motor neurons and muscles. Motor neurons extend from the central nervous system and connect to our muscle cells, which are also called muscle fibers. A motor neuron connects with the muscle cell at the neuromuscular junction. Here the motor neuron releases the neurotransmitter acetylcholine in order to transfer the action potential from the neuron to our muscle cell. A single motor neuron and all the muscle cells it controls is called a motor unit. Just one motor unit can consist of thousands of muscle cells. Together, motor neuro units can work to help us carry out smooth, coordinated movements, like walking across a room or raising our hand. Some activities require more motor units than others. For example, let's say you're trying to lift a pen. The pen has a small mass, so the force you'll need to lift it will also be very small. As such, lifting the pen will only require a small number of motor units. Now let's say you're trying to lift a 5 pound weight. This will require a much larger force, so you will have to use more motor units. The more motor units you use, the more motor neurons and muscle cells that are being activated. The magnitude of the force that is produced by your muscles can also be influenced by the size of the motor unit and the thickness of the muscle cell. If you'll recall, some motor units can have thousands of muscle cells, while others may only have a few. As you might expect, larger motor units can exert a larger force. Similarly, smaller motor units will produce a smaller force. What's more, motor units are often recruited from smallest to largest. In other words, whenever we're doing some type of activity, we'll recruit our smaller motor units before the larger ones. Let's go back to the pen and 5 pound weight example. When you lift the pen, you're recruiting motor units that are smaller than the ones you would need to recruit when you lift that weight. Again, larger motor units produce a larger force. Similarly, when you curl that 5 pound weight, you recruit the smaller motor units in your bicep before you recruit the larger ones. We can also increase the strength of our muscles by thickening our muscle cells. This is exactly what happens when you exercise. Muscle cells are made of myofibrils, and every time we work out, we make these myofibrils a little bigger. Therefore, the thicker the myofibril, the thicker the muscle cell, and the larger the force our muscles can produce. Okay, so let's review. A motor unit is made up of a motor neuron and all the muscle cells it controls. Three factors can influence the size of the force that our muscles produce. The number of motor units involved, the size of the motor units involved, and the thickness of our muscle cells. So today, you will have a chance to explore motor unit recruitment. Motor unit recruitment just refers to how many motor neurons are being activated during an activity. And remember, the more motor neurons you're recruiting, the more muscle cells you're recruiting. 
we can actually measure the electrical activity of our muscles using a device called EMG. EMG stands for electromyography. We can use electromyography to assess muscle health and how nerve cells control these muscles. More specifically, EMG allows us to measure muscle contractions and muscle responses to nerve stimulation. For instance, we could use EMG to measure the electrical activity of our muscles when we lift the pen and when we lift the weight. In clinical settings, EMG can be used to detect muscle or nerve damage and specifically locate the site of this damage. This can be really useful in targeting and treating symptoms of nerve damage, like pain or weakness. However, you don't need to be a doctor to use EMG. Just hook up an EMG device into a computer or iPad or even your phone. Then attach the electrode patches to a muscle, let's say your bicep. Now, when you flex like this, your muscle activity may look something like this. So let's stop wasting time and get to recording our muscle activity. Have fun!